Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is Tesla Today. And today we have Yashu Sharma joining us. Thank you very much, as always. Big day, of course. Uh, I don't know if we're getting too excited about Investor Day coming out. We had some big news with Elon sharing that he's going to be revealing the master plan part three. So today, 20 minutes of this, we want to talk about everything that you think, uh, Yashu, that's going to be uh, discussed here. So let's start off with welcome. How are you doing? Good. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Thanks everyone in the chat for, for tuning us on another, it seems like never ending Tesla news cycle going on. <laughs> That's all good news right now, right? Since December to now, there's been fantastic news, never ending. I want it to not end at all. So let's get started with this, which is, um, let's do this properly. So I'm sorry, guys. I had some issues with my, um, with my, uh, sh sharing the slides here today, but of course we saw, oops, we saw this, which is master plan part three. It's Elon suite this morning. The path to a fully sustainable energy future for Earth will be presented March 1st. The future is bright. And this is the uh, screenshot of the Investor Day um, invite that some people are getting right now. So th the part I want to just focus on is fully sustainable energy future for Earth. What was your thinking about this? Yeah, I think the that text gets me two ways talking about energy of course um and then autos as well but the photo specifically everyone is talking and zooming in on the photo and saying okay well this is obviously some sort of new model compact model coming out side pieces now i'm a little bit different in this boat where i don't think there's going to be a new model announced i think there's going to be a new way to manufacture these uh, and specifically the model three that'll bring down cost over time so much so that you can just call it the model whatever it's kind of like that 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 famous philosophical question when someone asks you you know if, if you take a board off of the ship and then you put a new board in and over time you, you kind of do that throughout the ship is that ship once all of the boards have been replaced the old <laughs> ship or is it the new ship that's kind of the way i look at this thing because it's not necessarily anything massively different i'd imagine there'd be a refresh with the model three that'll come back down in price but i i really look at it as a manufacturing play and looking at it from elon saying about master plan part three he said this specifically at cyber rodeo that mass plan part three is all about scale, scale that we've never seen in mankind. So immediately that has to point to manufacturing. Uh, there's been a lot of good content recently out about people saying, well, there could be two side pieces that we're seeing in that photo and then the front rear uh, or the front cast and then the rear cast and then the top. That's really all kind of you or and then the battery pack. That's really all you need to mass manufacture these uh, new, let's say, $25,000 cars. And I think if you talk about Osborne effect, I'd be worried if Tesla announced a brand new model during this March 1st investors day. If they said, look, we have a new model coming out. It'll be the, it'll be $25,000 in price. It'll come out next year. Um, I just would worry that people would hold off buying the model three and hold off, you know, with their purchases this year in lieu of that. Uh, in fact, I have friends that are, have said they can't wait for this new cheaper Tesla to come out because they want to buy this cheaper thing and not necessarily this more expensive Model 3. So I think what will happen here, um, and, and you know, Sandy Monroe's made a nice video of talking about his thoughts on this, is how they, can how they can manufacture this new refreshed, let's call it Model T or Model 3, uh, 3 2.0 into a cheaper car over time, and then also copy and paste this across gigas everywhere. And I think that's really going to be the the crux of the conversation on March 1st. Okay, hold on. Keep keep talking for a second here. I'm going to present sure. something else here shortly. And um, hold on. I'll talk about energy while uh, while you do that as well. Okay, hold uh, on. No, actually, I'm, I think I'm all set here. Okay, cool. Okay. So let's just go back to what you said there, which is, um, boom, here we go. Okay, much better. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is what we just covered, the the invite, right? And you were saying that some people were just kind of looking very closely at what is this at the backdrop, right? So Corey Steuben from Monroe & Associates quickly showed out that this is actually the side panel. And he, you know, looks like potentially he said the Model Y could, it, could look a little shorter, he said. But basically, this is photo on the left is a normal photo you can get from the internet of, of the factories that uh, Tesla has. And so there's mass producing these um, these cars. And then there's this is what it looks like. So it's very clearly the same thing. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when they spit this out, which is this morning, they have a full analysis of what they might do. And one thing they noticed was if you count the number of these things that are on the, uh, on the invite here, 
it actually adds up to one point so a certain number per day. And if that's in mm -hmm. production, then it's actually 1.9. So they're kind of saying that we can probably produce this in mass production. Yeah, this brought me back to battery day vibes when everyone was micro analyzing like the cathode and everyone, was, <laughs> everyone became like experts on the, the anode, the cathode and like all the battery cell chemistry. And you're talking about, I forgot what was it, like wet jellies back then and like those jellyfish photos that were circulating. So it brought me back those kind of like tinfoil vibes, which I love personally because, you know, speculation is always fun to, to kind of go through. I don't know if we can realistically count the number because, I mean, even 2 million would not be a lot, right? Tesla wants to hit 20 million vehicle sales in 2030. If they're going to get there, we're going to we're gonna need a, 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 you know, an order of magnitude higher. But I think it does point to... I, I think I agree in principle. The general photo is supposed to probably show scale. Like, look how many there are here. And, and ideally, look how cheap we can make them. So that's that second part of the equation that we still want to hear from. I So the debate I've been having, I had a test Twitter space this morning. And the debate I'm having is, is this investor day going to be more about cars? Or is it going to be mm -hmm. more about energy? And is this going to be the day that Tesla is going to be finally not be seen anymore as a car company. They're going to come out with a big kind of announcement regarding energy, which is where I lean towards. But people go, well, take a look at that photo. And that invite is clearly cars. But here's, uh, let me share this, which is a couple of things here. One is, this is the announcement in the PR day about the investor yeah. day. And I know it's hard to read, so I'll read it out. It says, our investors will be able to see our most advanced production line, as well as discuss long-term expansion plans, Gen 3 platform and capital allocation. Mm -hmm. So most advanced production line and Gen 3 platform, clearly they're going to be talking about the car and long-term mm -hmm. expansion plans. But since they're going to announce master plan part three, it feels to me that this is going to be their time to come out. And just to share this, which is a review of all the master plans and where they're at. So this mm -hmm. is 20, 2008, master plan part one was released by Elon. Create a low volume car, which would necessarily be expensive. Use that money to develop a medium volume car at a lower price. Use that money to create an affordable high volume car. So these three were accomplished in 2008, 2012, and 2017. And then zero emission electric power generation using solar power. And uh, 2016, they bought Solar City, right? Okay. So yeah. they accomplished Master Plan Part One. And then they released, Mar uh, he released Part Two in 2016. Now, that's six years ago. And only one has been accomplished, create stunning solar roofs uh, with integrated battery storage. But these three are still ongoing. So and expand the electric vehicle product product line to address all major segments. So why don't you talk to me about that, right? When you heard Gen 3 platform and that it's going to be modular, do you hear compact car, a van, maybe a um, you know high, high, different kind of SUV? And then, of course, developing a self-driving 10x safer, 10 times safer than is it's still kind of ongoing and we're not close to that yet. And then enable your car to make money for you when you aren't using it. It's nowhere near uh, even potential. What's yeah. your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I think the product line, the expanding across all major segments, I think that's, you know, if they can get if they can get the two side pieces and the and 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 the, and the castings together with the structural battery pack, they can expand that plus or minus across a van, uh, across a compact, across you know a Chinese oriented model, uh, compact model or a Berlin one. They can have these kind of intricacies across continents. I think the last thing they want to do is just have the Model Three, and that's the thing that sells whether you live in Germany or you sell in China. I think having geographic specific models is the way to go and i think that's what they'll talk about with the gen 3 is how can we make something universal copy and paste our gigas but then add some sort of geographic intricacy to the model to make it specific to that country um of course there's still you know 10x safer that's subjective i'm sure they could pull data for that and then of, of course the that robo taxi platform uh, is, is is not out yet but I think with model with, with with part three, I think it's specifically going to be about um, copy and pasting gigafactories. That's what yes. I think. Yes, thank so, you. you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, because I think it's going to be more than just gigafactories. I think it's going to be mega pack factories. This is it. They're going to come out and say we're an energy company, and this is our plan for. If you go back to what he said, I just keep like coming back to what he said, right? Which is a fully sustainable energy future for Earth. Fully sustainable future for Earth. Mm -hmm. Now, I also kind of cheekily said, hey, he said the future is bright. And if you look at this, 
that lighting, <laughs> it looks like it's, it's being lit. And I'm like, <laughs> is that an Easter eggs? Does this mean solar farms? You know, if you're a fully sustainable energy future, and this is about scale, you're talking about lithium refineries, you're talking about um, more mining refinery uh, plants, Tesla energy, Tesla electric, and more I, mega packs. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think? Yeah, is it going to be more about cars or is it going to be more about... Um, I'm still going to go with with uh, with with against you on this. I, I still think it'll be more car focused, um, but there might be some mining sprinkled in a, a, as a part of their equation for the gigafactories. Be because of course, you wherever you put these factories, you're going to need uh, raw supplies for them and and raw and raw commodities. So. I think it's important that they talk about mining. And I think Tesla has been a little bit subdued on it. I don't think they're very excited about going into mining. I don't think they're no. they're like jumping up and down about it, but it's something that it might be a, necessarily, a necessary evil for them to do. Uh, but I think if, if we put that aside for a second and we just talk about scale, which we know is, is specifically about Tesla's master plan part three, I would be curious to know not only how do they build these cars, but how do they copy and paste these gigas really fast? Because of course we know Berlin was, I mean, generally speaking a, a year or two, but you know, how can we get that down to where they can build something as just an MVP level of giga, a giga that can start producing and then they can continue to work on it as it, as production still goes around. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Okay, so you know, just one more thing I want to show here, which is kind of uh, kind of cool, was this is a tweet by Alex, and he said, "In 2022, wind and solar together generated more electricity in Europe than coal and gas, respectively." And this is just a start. He did this in January of th January 31st, so two months ago or a month ago, mm -hmm. a month and a bit ago. And he showed a chart that shows that, uh, you know, that wind and solar finally passed gas and coal. The th reason I bring it up is that Elon then tweeted this out, which is not just a reply, not just a like, but he tagged it and he, or, you know, he retweeted, quote, retweeted it and said, wind and solar combined with batteries will solve sustainable energy for future. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> okay, so now you tie that with what he just said about Master Plan Part 3, fully sustainable energy for Earth. You notice how he's used the same words? Full mm. will solve sustainable energy for Earth. So mm -hmm. he says wind and solar. So some people brought this up yesterday, this morning, and I thought, wow, that's mm -hmm. pretty smart. Maybe yeah. they will do wind turbines. Could right. they use the electric engine that they perfected the great electric wind turbine. Anyways, I'm really hoping that this is going to be a solar farm, wind and solar farms that they're going to announce. They're going to have either already in place or they're going to, you know, have plans for. Um, I don't know. I'm getting excited. And then when you saw capital allocation, um, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? So when you saw going back to this slide here, um, they talk about uh, capital allocation, and people mm -hmm. are thinking, oh, that's because that's the um, that's the share buyback. Yeah, but it may not be the share back back. It could be that mm -hmm. we're gonna go after the sustainable energy for the entire Earth, and so I, we need to share with you how much money we're gonna need. We're gonna get that to be able to do this long term expansion plans. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I don't think it's about the buyback. I think there might be a question or two about that during the Q and A session because, of course, retail investors are myopically really focused on that in the short term. Uh, but going back to your wind turbine um, uh, thought. I mean, all you all. I mean, looking at it from from a macro <laughs> perspective, all you need for running a giga really is is energy, is energy to run the factory. You need supplies to build stuff with, and you need the manufacturing technology to go through and build um, the actual end products, whether it's cars or insert mega packs or whatever. So, I mean, maybe they talk about the package of how they can fran like almost put together a package like a franchise would of like how we are going to get energy independent of where we are because we know what happened with germany one thing was and everyone was worried right. hey coal is going to be a big problem now we can get energy independent of where we are because in sunny areas we'll use solar panels in you know you know other um, just remote areas we'll use wind turbines uh we have raw supplies because in this this and this area we have set up mining deals uh or or refiner deals and then of course the technology that we're going to use is going to be 
this technology. And we're going to copy and paste this across four or five places over the next five years. And we think that'll be enough to fund or, or to, to sustain to our 20 million goal. And I think it's two terawatt goal uh, or three terawatt goal by 2030. So, um, yeah, I mean, totally agree. Okay. Two questions for you then. One is, what's the chance that they might actually announce uh, new mega pack factories, um, new gigapack factories? Or that's mm. dumb because they would just announce it as they come, you know, they close the sign the deals. And then two, are they going to share more information about mega packs? Are they going to finally say, you know, they, they release that video on Lathrop and yeah. are they going to say, this is the margins, this is our sales plan for the year, and then start talking about Tesla as an energy company, not just a, a, a car company? I think they might announce Mexico because there's so much smoke around that happening yeah. already. And if the cat's out of the bag, just might as well say it at this point. Um, <laughs> I think Tesla doesn't like to announce stuff like this just on random investor days or battery days. Right. They like to save it for either earnings calls or specific events or specific, right. you know, ribbing cutting ceremonies. So I think at this point, Mexico is kind of out of the bag. Um, so yes, everyone hit like and, sit and, and subscribe. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But on your point about mega packs, because I think that's super underappreciated, uh, I don't think that we'll get any updates on margin or stuff like that with mega pack. <sighs> I think they'll, I think they'll let the earnings do the talking, because if they know, if if you know you're sitting on a gold mine, you don't need to go out and scream about it. You just let the numbers do talking. And I think Tesla is sitting on a gold mine with mega packs. Well, talking about gold mines, so lithium refineries. They're going to expand yes. that. They announced that that's lot, uh, it's already in production or they broke mm -hmm. ground on it in January. Nobody really yeah. talked about it. It's going to take two years, he said. But are they going to announce more lithium refinery? I mean, obviously, right? They're going to have to talk about where they can get all these minerals. And so... Yeah. Corpus Christi was really a kind of low key thing that happened because people, you know, delayed gratification is hard for a lot of investors because it's going to take a couple of years for that to come for, to, to fruition. <laughs> go mines but it's it's going to be interesting to see regardless because maybe they don't talk about the specific locations but they talk about the uh their strategy on acquiring these places and how many they need and yeah. how many partners uh they have in place so maybe they talk about it at a macro level but they don't talk about it specifically in terms of what execution will happen and to be clear I think it's important to also set expectations for battery or I call it a battery day. Wow. Freudian slip. It's important to set expectations for investor day to not be like, oh, you know, we're going to run 10% the next day because Tesla is going to announce something secret that no one knew about. I think this is a really good way for us to get info on the long term Tesla orientation and the right. compass that they're following. Yeah. But I, I, I wouldn't bank on any specific, low, uh, you know, short term announcements here. Okay. You're, you're, you're one of your things that you're very, very smart about and you follow is kind of the stock and the daily movements and so forth. You've got a good kind of sense of that. And I love, I, I love the interview I did with you where you kind of laid out your thinking about the future of the forecast for Tesla, the stock. What do you expect to happen in from now to March 1st, the stock going to rise. And then what's going to happen right on March 2nd, is it sell the news kind of scenario or is there a potential that they really truly redefine the company as an energy company or some announcement that could be exciting or do we just get all excited us investors we always just get excited we over you know <laughs> expect yeah. more and then it's not really is what we all thought or i well, thought look, <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> well look i think i look at battery Day as a prime template for this yeah. They announced something to original investors were were really like going wow like really this is their yeah. this is your goals here and Wall Street kind of just scoffed at it and said yeah that's cool but why don't you show me that yeah. you're going to actually do this instead of tell me so I think the same template applies here and remember Wall Street really does control the institutions control mega cap stocks like Tesla retail investor sentiment really doesn't do much um, so at two hundred dollars sitting here and we're up ninety percent in the last couple of months I would say that there's risk. Uh, outstanding to the downside, or at least to re or at least to settle down. You know, for us to continue this me meteoric rise that we've had in the last twenty five trading days um, would be nothing short of incredible. So I, I bank to kind of mean uh, inversion. Same thing when we're we're you know it's the same thing going up, same thing going down. Mean reversion always kicks back in. So. I'd imagine that we probably hang out here. Maybe we have another couple of weeks of strength, but I think as uh, as Investors Day approaches, hedge funds take some profits off the table because they've been front running this thing. I think we probably settle down a little bit, and then after uh, Investors Day, 
um, I would say I am more subdued about <clears throat> my expectations. I don't expect a meteoric rise post it because of something announced or something like that. I just don't think the street operates like that. Okay, but I'll take. I've it. been saying something. I've been saying something completely the opposite of you, but I'm okay. not. I I don't trade stocks. I'm not. I don't care what happens. What's your expectation? I, I just have fun with this whole thing. Well, I just I I go back against the people like uh, others that I've been talking to who say the stock fell from 300 to 100. And so therefore, it's going to take a year for it to get from 100 to 150. That's a 50% growth. And another mm -hmm. year from go 150 to 250. My answer was, if it can fall from 300 to 100 in two months, it can rise from 100 to 300 in two months. Why did it fall from 300? It fell because of China demand, Twitter issues, and Twitter him selling Twitter stock. And it fell because of macro. All mm -hmm. of these have been resolved or are resolving. Plus, there's all these wonderful, incredible news since December that you know we brought us up from 100 to 200, but why isn't it going back up to 300? Uh, you know, just if we go down the list of all the things that uh, has happened that we haven't even talked about, but basically, you know, um, I have a I have a list and I can't remember one of them right now. But there's just just one news after another that has happened, mm. right? Um, so. I, and so yes, I'm obviously there's going to be a rise. There's going to be a little fall. Then it's going to be a rise. But I'm just like, why can't it fall a rise up to two three hundred again? It should theoretically because the fundamentals have only improved, and the, the reasons why it fell have been resolved resolving. So, hmm. well, for the record, I hope yeah. you're right and I'm wrong. <laughs> of course, so. I always. Um, <laughs> it's just it's it's just a matter of where you peg your expectations. If you talk about mean reversion, you're talking about the same thing I'm talking about, which is going back to the mean. You're setting the mean to last year when we were at 300, you know, 350 or something like that and saying, "Look, mean reversion will kick back in there." I guess my maybe short short sightedness or, you know, ultra, you know, people have I sunk me down to the ground where I'm setting my mean reversion back to where we were in lows. So, uh, sure. I hope I hope you're right. So <laughs> I know I know I'm I, I'm that's, my goal is not to I just have to, I like to be optimistic and just stay optimistic and regardless I'm not trying to predict the price or try to do momentum trading. So just be clear I'm not I don't do that. I just think it's fun to always to stay positive and think about yeah you know uh, right I mean I so my point is this right when the stock fell from 300 to 100 it was re rated and people kept saying see it was over. The PE was over too much because of this built-in growth, and people think that it's more than just a car company. It is not. It's just a car mm -hmm. company, okay? And then what I'm upset with is that don't let this other group tell us what is the proper PE ratio for this company. It is not right. And just because the stock price says that does not mean that that is the correct thing, right? The, you know, mm -hmm. this is a not a car company, and the PE should be deserve a lot more. The growth was not actually impacted at all, really. If mm. you think about it, sub you know sub from fifty to maybe forty something percent, it was mm -hmm. pretty frigging close for in a year that was hit so hard with so many you know headwinds that or tailwinds yeah. that hit it. And then so this year, if there is no recession, it's gonna it's way past. But even if there is a recession, we still gonna get close to fifty percent growth uh, because yeah. of the price cuts and so forth. So, anyways, my point is. I'm waiting for the day that Tesla is no longer seen as a car company. Could it be this March 1st? We'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Yashi. Appreciate Cheers. your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for, everyone for yeah, tuning bye -bye. in.